Okay, guys, we're back. So we got my tray or my pad here, and we're ready to rock and roll with the tear seals. So what I want to do first is let's put down a paper towel over the pad because it's still going to be a little wet. We just took it out of the bath to... deacidify it now i'm going to be working on this when it's wet and that's not a problem for me when i do my repairs with tengojo i prefer it to be wet i do not like doing the repairs dry i think you get a better repair doing it wet so let's take off we don't have a piece of rame on the top here so let's go back to our diagram we, we're going to repair the staples we're going to reinforce and then we're going to reinforce down here there is a, a rip i can see it right here we want to repair that as well and we're going to do this all in one so here's your here's your rip right here on the bottom it's laying nice and flat, so we're not going to do anything with it, meaning we're not going to disturb it, but I can see it. It's about right below Magneto's right eye going down. That's one, and then we're going to repair the staples to make them hardy because the staple is the anchor of our job. Let's take a look at this paper towel. Let's see if it absorbed any of the color. And it looks pretty clean. So I think we did a pretty good job with cleaning it. And when it dries, it's gonna be nice. So what do we have here? We have, let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so we have methyl cellulose. We have Tengojo paper right here small roll in fact a piece just fell off so here's the tengojo right here we have we need a brush so let's just get a simple brush from my brush container this one looks scuzzy i think we're throwing that one out let's get this brush this brush looks fine we can use this brush now we want to repair it so let's start with the top staple, okay, guys? So what I like to do is I take a piece of Tengojo, and we're going to try to make the Tengojo where it is bigger than the staple because we want to reinforce it. I don't want to go on the graphics, though, and I always tear the Tengojo because if some of the fibers are bigger, it doesn't bother me. I, I don't mind that. I want that to be bigger, meaning I want it to be an odd shape because then you do not notice the repair as much. And I've said this a zillion times, most likely. I do Tengojo repairs like I am repairing fiberglass on Corvettes. And I was told by or taught by an old Corvette guy who has been working on Corvettes since the 60s. And he said, when you do fiberglass repair, you wanna fray the edges just like this. So it blends in nice and you don't notice it. Then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take the Tengojo and we're gonna lay it down just like that, right on the wet. And we're gonna push it in with our finger. And that's why I like applying the Tengojo to a wet cover, because the water itself will actually help with the repair. It will hold the Tengojo down, and then you wanna use your methyl cellulose, and you just wanna when you put the methyl cellulose on, you want to spread it from in out like this. Because if you go inwards, 
what can happen is that you have a very good chance of disrupting disrupting the repair and pulling the fibers inwards and it will not look as professional because remember anyone can do a tengojo repair it's not rocket science the thing that not everyone can do is doing it in a professional manner and that is the key when you're sending books into cgc because it's not oh i used the proper materials i used methyl cellulose i used wheat paste i used tengojo paper and i can send it in and voila i'm able to get a conserved grade because I used proper materials. That's not the whole truth. Because CGC is also looking whether it was done in a professional manner. And there is degrees of professionalism when you're doing this. So you can make the repair. But guess what? The repair sucks. And it's not good. And then there you get banged with a restore grade. So listen, I know from experience, because I've been there, I've done it. I've repaired books and the repair I knew was okay, wasn't the best. And then that's why you get a restored grade. So it has to be the proper materials plus professional methods now i don't think and i think it's very hard to get a professional conserved grade if you make the tengojo repairs dry because you need to do the repairs and then you need to press the book and you need to press the book when it's wet, press it until it becomes dry. And that's what I'm going to do with this repair. And you'll see, you'll see when I'm done, how flat the repair will become. And it's key. You want to do it where you do the repair, you flatten it out, and then you will have a beautiful result and there's times when I do these repairs where I in the past actually dyed the Tengojo paper yes that's right I've dyed it and how did I dye it I dyed it by using teas and what I would try to do, because the Tengojo is white, although it is transparent, it's still white. So what I would do is I would take it and I would soak the Tengojo in tea to give the Tengojo a tan color. I would not do that with this book, because what may happen by doing that is that if CGC picks up on that, and if they say, and if they say, wow, that looks like it was dyed, then you run into a problem. Because then what you're doing is you're making a repair and you are adding color to it. Even though you're using tea or you're dyeing the Tengojo to be a tan color with a tea product, you don't want to run the risk. So if you're going to be doing this type of work, you want to keep it the way it is. And, and that's why people also ask me, hey, Jerry, when you do leaf casting, can't you use different color pulps to try to match the graphics that are missing 
And you know what? The answer is I can probably do that if I wanted to. I, I probably could take my time. And if I really wanted to, I can put different sections of pulp in the actual cover or in the wrap and try to emulate color loss that was missed. But guess what? Then you run the risk of again getting a conserved grade and then you have a problem. You don't want to conserve, I mean, a, a restored grade by perhaps CGC thinking that you did some type of color touch even though we know that it was not color touch. Catch my drift, everyone? Do you understand what I'm saying? So what we're going to do now is now I'm going to put a piece of the Reme on top of the wrap. And I just don't want to dump it on the wrap because I don't know if the camera is picking it up. I'm rolling the Reme. I'm not rolling something to smoke. I'm rolling the Reme on the side, just like this. And this is the way I put the Reme on. And everyone's seen me done this if, if you watch my channel. So we can roll it out so it's nice and flat. Because once you put the repairs down, you don't want to start lifting the Reme and manipulating. So now what I want to do is I want to take a paper towel. We're going to put a paper towel down. And then what I'll do is I will take a spoon. Now it's funny during the comic book community awards, my family was watching and here's my award. Look, the lights go on. I don't know if it's going on. Oh yeah. But is this this year or last year? Uh, this is, I think this is this year's award. Thank you. Comic book community awards and everyone who voted for me and Brian for making such a very nice program. So getting back to what I was saying. So we were watching the comic book community awards and my family, they like to make fun of me that I do this. They think it's really off the charts, and, <laughs> but it's, it's okay. And when the montage of the nominees were shown, it was funny because my wife and daughter were like, Dad, everyone's using modern equipment and doing their repairs and things of that nature. And then what are you doing? You're using a spoon. So I guess that just shows that I'm an old relic of the past and I try to use tools that are available. So obviously you hear that barking upstairs. It means someone is home. And I wouldn't be surprised if I get called or if they try to get me to come upstairs. But I'm working right now. We're doing business. Okay, so what do we got here? We got our wrap done. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it over to the side. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my shelving units just like this. And then we're going to take one strip of paper towel, just like that. Okay. Then I'm going to delicately put my page, the inner wrap of the X-Men number one, just like this. Nice and easy. Then what I will do is put my spoon away. And I will put the other tools away when I'm doing it. Clean workstation is the best workstation. Then what I will do is I will put a second row of paper towels, just like that. Then what we're going to do is we will put the second shelving unit on. And then I will be right back. So I'm going to set the camera up so you can see how I put it in the press. Okay, so hang loose. Okay, guys, there is my vintage book binding press. 
I do have a second shelving unit in there. And that's Mike Night Tiger's book that is in the press. So we're going to start working on that, Mike. I know that I had it for a while, but what's great about this book binding press is you can put two books or two projects at once. Let's see, maybe I can make it bigger where you guys can see it. There you go. So I have two projects in there at one time. So now what I will do is I will get going. And then what we want to do is we want to wrench down on the book binding press, just like this. And I want to make it as tight uh, as I can. That's it. I can't go any tighter. One more. Uh, that's it. So then what I'll do is I will keep that in the book binding press just like that. And then when we are done, I would say probably overnight, I'll let it sit in there and I'll actually keep the wet paper towels. I'm not gonna change them out. It's not that important because I'd rather the wrap to dry slowly. And then we'll see how it turned out and we'll trim the Ten Gojo. And then we'll start the long process of going over each page until we get to the first, I believe the first and second wrap where we're going to have to do some leaf casting. Let me give you a little view of the Jerry the Jitterbug shop right there. There's some long boxes. There's my steamer. There's my digital microscope. See over there in the corner to the left on the shelf. Those are all boxes that I haven't opened up yet. So guys, I know many people in the community sent me AOKs and things of that nature, but unfortunately, I will get to it. There they are right there, and I'll see you soon with those. Okay, guys, so just a little insight to the Jerry the Jitterbug lair. There we go. There's my workbench. There's the oil burner. And then we'll go around and it's not that big. It's just my oil burner room that I use. And then we'll flip around. There's my workstation that I use. And then we'll flip around and I'll do a 360, why not? There we go, there we go. There's some tools, there's some more books piled up. So that's the shop, guys. Nothing crazy. So I hope you enjoyed it. And stay tuned.